all of the seats are filled. Now, can I ask anyone who's got an empty seat next to them, put their hand up. Hi. If you've got an empty seat next to you, put your hand up. Okay. Can we ask the volunteers, please, to bring in the people? It's unfair. We've got a number of people who weren't allowed in by Excel because there were no spaces for them to sit. So they were waiting outside. Now, there are spaces here, please. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up high, please. Keep your hands up. High, 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 so people can see them good. Or move down if you can. Come quickly, volunteers, bring the people in, please. Yeah, they're moving down. OK, inshallah. Everyone, move to your left. If you heard that, so we know where the spaces are. Brother, if you can move to your left, inshallah, so those gaps are filled. Every, every row, please, sisters as well. Yeah, sisters more importantly. Okay, good. It really is unfair, subhanAllah, when there's seats here, they're having to wait outside. I, I said this previously at events, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is that the best shoulders in Salah are those which are soft, i.e. those which accommodate their brother or sister to make space for someone. Now that's in Salah. If you can accommodate someone here, your fellow brother or sister to sit next to you so that they can benefit, and I don't say it lightly, when I say literally, it could change someone's life. Yesterday, alhamdulillah, we had seven shahadas, seven people who accepted Islam after coming here, listening to the talks. Do you want to be the person that denies someone that? Allahu alim, Allah knows best. But at least make space and you'll be rewarded for it. Okay? Please move in. If there's this empty seat next to you, fill it. So we can see from one side all of the empty seats. Volunteers, can you tell me if those rows at the end, because I can't see down there, if there's empty seats, are they being filled? I can see four rows back, there's two empty seats there. Brother in the grey hoodie and the hat behind the brother in the white robe. That's it, mashallah. Move across. Well done. There's one seat there. Brothers, please, come on. Move across. If there's any empty seats next to you, over there, if, are there any empty seats? Put your hands up. Okay. If there's an empty seat to your left, put your hand up. If there's an empty seat to your left, move into it. Jazakallah Are there any more empty seats to your left over there? There are? Shift across please brothers. Shift across. Fill those empty seats please. So it's easier, they can, the volunteers can bring people in and sit them down. Sisters, I can see some empty seats as well. Please make sure, okay? If you see the volunteers bringing anyone, that you let them know that there's an empty seat so they can sit there. I need someone from the volunteers to tell me when we're good. Okay, a couple more minutes, inshallah. Amazing, mashallah. Sister's got her hand well raised there. Good. Just there. Sisters can sit there. Sisters can sit at the back there. There's about five empty seats just here, third row back. There's one there, one at the front, Ali's hogging it.
What's going on, Riz? Why? More people coming in or people going out? Okay, just two more minutes, inshallah. Two more minutes. Use the time productively if you want. You can either speak to each other or you can make some adhkar. Make some adhkar, inshallah. Make dua for our speakers. Make dua for the people who organize this event. Make dua for everyone who's been helping out. Make dua for the volunteers who have been working tirelessly throughout the day and the days running up to this event. Use that moment, make dua for them, inshallah. It's just a couple of minutes, just a couple more minutes, please, brothers and sisters. Grab that ball. Is that it, done? Okay. Is everyone ready now? You can put your hands down. I've been told no. I've been told if you see anyone wandering, trying to find a seat, then do the nice thing and just call them to come and sit next to you if you have an empty seat, inshallah. Okay? Brothers to the brothers only, yeah? And likewise to the sisters. Good, alhamdulillah. I just have to say to everyone, Look, Mufti Menk is about to come on stage. Now, I want everyone to really pay attention because you guys missed some gems over the last couple of days. Mufti dropped some very cool jokes and some people weren't paying attention and they missed it. So do concentrate, inshallah. And if I can invite Mufti Menk up and then, inshallah, we will have our rest of the, our program straight after. Mufti? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, alhamdulillahi wa ahdahu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala malla nabiya ba'dahu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My brothers, my sisters, I'm a Muslim. The bulk of us, if not almost all of us, are Muslimin. It's a gift of the Almighty to be chosen to worship the Maker who made you and Him alone. It's a gift of the Almighty that you are chosen to accept all the messengers who came from the beginning to the end, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam being the final messenger. It's a gift of the Almighty that we respect and revere all of those messengers and we believe in goodness that has come from all of them. But do you know what is an outstanding gift that the Almighty has bestowed upon, which means you're already a Muslim, you're already a believer, you're already worshipping Allah. But there is one gift you have been blessed with that is outstanding. Do you know what it is? Iman is already there. We're talking about an outstanding gift after you being a Muslim, a mu'min, etc. It is the forgiveness of Allah, something known as repentance, the readiness of your maker to forgive you and to wipe out the sins you have committed by merely asking him sincerely, Oh my Lord, forgive me, I have faltered, I regret, I was wrong. If you don't forgive me, who do I have to forgive? That is the biggest gift. And this is why shaitan comes to us from a door. That door, he wants us to lose hope in the mercy of Allah so that we don't realize the favor of the Almighty upon us. Let's go back to the original sin, the first sin. When someone says, what was the first sin committed? Can I ask it to you? What was it? It depends how you look at it, whether it is from Iblis or from Adam. So if it is from Iblis, Allah Almighty says, when we created mankind, we instructed the angels to prostrate. 
out of acknowledgement of status to Adam. فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ All the angels prostrated. But Iblis, who was from the jinn kind, did not prostrate. What did he say? أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ Oh, I am better than him. I am better than him. He was jealous of the status given by Allah to man. So he said, I am not going to prostrate. That's a sin. We're going to get to that just now. But he refused to obey Allah's instruction because he was upset with Allah. Why did you make someone better than me? That was the original sin. If you look at it from all the sins, then you have man Adam alayhi salam, the first of our species, he was told by Allah that you have a special place known as Jannah. For your information, that Jannah was a different Jannah from the one we're going to be returning to. I don't know if you're aware of this. It was actually known as Jannatul Ibtila, a special place, a special garden created in order to test Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. It was a special place known as Jannah al Ibtila, the paradise or the garden within which the testing was going to happen. It's not the exact Jannatul Khuld that we are praying to return to or to go to, right? It's not the exact same place. It's a slightly different place. So, when he was there, Allah told him, do as you wish. But, there is only one thing I want you to stay away from. Don't get close to this tree. Don't eat from this tree. Now there is a debate, was it an Apple, was it an Android, uh, sorry, was it an iPhone, was it not? I always say, if you look at the Apple, because I'm an Android man, by the way. Uh, well, all of you who said, ah, oh, the Apple is bitten, have you noticed? You see, the logo, it's a bitten Apple. I don't like bitten stuff, bro. Allah grant us ease, Android all the way. My brothers, my sisters, there is a debate. Was it an apple? Was it not an apple? In the Islamic scripture, the apple is not mentioned. It's mentioned elsewhere, but not necessarily. Whatever it was, it was from the tree. Okay? And Allah says, don't eat from the tree. One instruction. Only one thing you had to do, my beloved forefather. And you didn't manage. Allahu Akbar. And then you blame me. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah forgive all of us and strengthen us and guide us and give us goodness. Allah Almighty told him, O oh Adam and, and his wife Eve, O oh Hawa, the only thing I want, you can enjoy, eat and drink as you wish, but don't go near this tree. Guess what he did? It's the same tree he went near. Not only that, he ate from it. They ate from it. But that was part of the plan of Allah. Allah says, what was of importance was not that he ate from the tree. It was what happened thereafter. He immediately realized, hey, what I did was wrong. Immediately, instantly. He says, what I did was wrong. And you know what? The two of them collectively said, Oh, our Lord, they're addressing Allah. They were communicating with Allah before anyway. They are communicating with Allah again and saying, Oh, our Lord, we wronged ourselves. Why we wronged ourselves? Why didn't they say we wronged you, we sinned against you? Because they knew Allah and they know Allah does not need the obedience of the whole world. Nor does Allah be affected by the disobedience of the whole world. If anything, your obedience will elevate your status, not the status of Allah, which is already elevated. And your disobedience will drop your level, not the level of Allah, which is already above all of that. So they said, Rabbana, oh our Lord, we did something wrong against ourselves. We went against our own selves. We did something that would result in our own downfall. And you know what? We are so helpless because we have none besides you to forgive us. So 
Valamna and Fusana, we wronged ourselves, wa illam taghfir lana, and if you do not forgive us, wa tarhamna, and you do not have mercy on us, lana kunanna min al khasirin, we will definitely be from among the losers. Allah loved those words. Why? Because you're, you're acknowledging Allah. You're already worshipping Him by saying, Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Besides you, there is no one. The issue of forgiveness, who do I ask? I ask you, O oh Allah. If you forgive us, then we are successful. If you don't, we will lose. Allah says, we forgave them. We forgave them instantly. Instantly. Does it ever say in the Quran that they kept on repeating it and repeating it and begging Allah to say, oh Allah, oh Allah. Allah says, they asked us and immediately we forgave them. I want to pause there for a moment. Let's go back. If you take a careful look at what Iblis, Shaitan did initially, be careful. He uses the same plot against us amongst one another. I am better than this guy. My color is better than that. My money is more than that. My position is more than this. My race is better. My tribe is better. My city is better. My suburb is better. My house is better. My car is better. My phone, astaghfirullah, is better. Android is not better, by the way. I changed my mind. It's okay, so long as your phone does your job, astaghfirullah, it's fine. Okay, you see how we reverse the fatwa? By the way, some of you might take it seriously. I'll find a big refutation just now. It was only something on a lighter note. I hope you got that. Don't take it. Don't hold it against me. You can even use Huawei. It's fine. <laughs> By the way, the camera of the honor is probably one of the best I've come across. H-O-N-O-R. Sorry for advertising, but it's something worth looking at because you'll stop the debate between the two, inshallah. My brothers, my sisters, let me let you know, don't worry. Your watch tells time, my watch tells time. It's okay. Yours might be a Rolex, mine might be a Bolex. It's fine. You know when they make it elsewhere, they just put a little line at the bottom of the R, but it looks ditto, identical. The difference is this one was 25 grand, the other one was 25 bucks. Right? Does it mean this thing here is not going to tell the time? It told time. I'm happy. I remember a time when I used to wear watches back in the day. I might start again. Some people are actually uh, prodding me, nah, Sheikh, just wear a watch again. But for years, I haven't worn watches. Back in the day, the guy tells me, Sheikh, I'm ready to pay you so much for your watch. And it was a 10 real watch, a, a minor two pound watch. That's what it was. I said, why would you pay so much? He says, because your watch. My mind, Shaitan comes to me and says, hey, that's a good business, man. Imagine I bought Mufti Menk's watch, subhanAllah. What did you pay? I paid a grand. <laughs> Bro, I got it for two pounds. MashaAllah, what a profit. We wouldn't do that. We would not do that. Why? We don't want to cheat people and deceive them. It's not that it's better or not. My brothers, my sisters, there gets to a point where you forget the competition on earth is you competing with yourself. What were you yesterday? What are you today? And what are you going to be tomorrow? That's the competition. If you're better, you are winning the competition. If you're worse, you've lost it, even if there are a million others around you cheering you on. May Allah grant us forgiveness. I'm not in competition with you, and you shouldn't be in competition with me, especially regarding worldly material items. Not at all. And this is why Allah's kept it so beautiful that if you earn a hundred pounds a month and someone earns 10,000 pounds a month, I tell you, you will only be able to eat a certain amount a day, not more than that. And if you have bought food worth 10 quid and someone else bought food worth 100, 200, 500 and whatever other food that might be, trust me, chances are the cheaper it was, the healthier it may have been. And chances are, you're both filled. I mean, I've had my, my rice and something else, and I'm full. I've had water. And you might have had a beautiful gourmet burger, whatever it was, you know? Yeah, off the elbow, as they say. Mashallah. It's okay. Mashallah. But guess what? I probably am f more full than you. And healthier. I probably could run a marathon, and you're just going to want to sleep now. May Allah grant us ease. The point is, that's not what we should be competing with or about. Because 
Go back to shaitan. He became jealous because this guy is now going to get more attention from Allah than me. And why did Allah give him and raise him and make him? So look, on one hand, he knows Allah because he's already jealous because Allah's giving him more. And on the other hand, he's saying, I don't want to acknowledge and obey your instruction because I'm burning so much about what you gave someone else. Is that happening in your life? If it is, today is the day when you extinguish that. Be happy for others. Be very happy for them. In your field, another person excelled way beyond you. Say, Alhamdulillah. That's when you're a true believer. That's when you've understood it was Allah who gave. Because the hadith says, Inna al-hasada ya'kulul hasanat kama ta'kulun narul hatab. Indeed, jealousy eats away your good deeds in the same way that fire eats away a dry log. You have a dry log now in winter, mashallah. You understand, as soon as you light it, mashallah, it's lit. And it's eaten in no time, you know, you've got to put another log. Because it doesn't stop, right? And it's all eaten up. Don't be jealous of someone whom Allah has bestowed favor upon. Say Alhamdulillah. If you want, if you want, you can perhaps make a dua that Allah blesses you with something similar without taking it away from that person. Where is man today? We have advanced. We become jealous of people, but we have so much. We're jealous of someone who's halfway because they're catching up. That's it. I know of people with businesses doing well, multi-millionaires. They are threatened by a similar business that's just starting up down the road. Threatened. Why? One day this guy's going to steal my business. My brother, did you not make your first billion? Yes, I did. Well, then give others a chance. Come on, man. You're not going to be able to eat up all of that. In your life, you won't spend more than a certain amount. Beyond that, it's going to be distributed amongst your heirs. The more you leave, the greater the chances of your heirs killing each other over your money. And that's a fact. The more you leave, the more dangerous it is for your heirs. The less you leave, the greater the chances of them living happily ever after. Have you thought of that? Go, check the studies. There are exceptions, but very few. Becoming fewer as the years are passing. My brothers and sisters, Allah Almighty expects us to be happy when he has bestowed favor upon someone. Let's not go back to what shaitan did and become jealous of one another over whatever it may be. I've already mentioned issues. Wealth is one. Perhaps intelligence is another at schools be it primary secondary tertiary whatever it may be and beyond we become jealous of those who are intelligent sometimes or those who might be disciplined more than us what happens allah almighty bestows some with an understanding that perhaps is different from mine and yours they may be able to process things quicker and we are here saying Ah, don't talk to them. You know what? This guy, you know, he's like this and he's like that. Or she is like this and she is like that. No, make life easy for those at schools and colleges. Empower the brokenhearted. Speak to those whom no one speaks to, especially when there's no proper reason for that. You're a believer. Empower them. Allah will empower you and your entire future. We're still young. Many of us not married yet. Subhanallah. We still have a life ahead of us. Many of us don't have children yet. We still have children to come. We don't know how anything is going to turn out to be. So don't be deceived by the little that you've gotten up to now. When that has humbled you, the rest of it, what is to come will be better. When that has made you arrogant, what is to come will be your test. People are fast and quick to judge the children of others. Hang on, sister, you don't even have kids yet. Stop talking. Watch your mouth. Pray for those kids. Reach out to them in a positive way, not negative. Because when your kids come about, they probably will take the World Cup in negativity. If this is your attitude. Do you see? Be happy. That's why I say, wherever you are, look for the downtrodden. You will find Allah. When you talk to them, when you empower them, look for the downtrodden and do not be jealous of those who have more than you. So shaitan decides he doesn't want to worship Allah because Allah favored someone. Okay, that was number one. Number two, here is Adam alayhi salam. He was offered two things by Iblis. Now one might ask, but you know what? How did Iblis 
actually managed to communicate with them when he was expelled from that place. Didn't Allah say we expelled him from Jannah? I told you earlier, it's a slightly different Jannah. But I want to tell you that there are different narrations making mention of what exactly he did. They say from outside, he was affecting them with his whispers. The devil whispers, doesn't he? He comes to us, he makes us want to do wrong things by telling us, it's okay, just do it, it's fine. And you know the new line? It's not a new line, but sometimes people say, ah, oh, this is something that's happening to me now. I'm practicing and I know about the mercy of Allah. So shaitan whispers and he says, it's okay, commit the sin, you can seek forgiveness. Didn't you hear the sheikh say, Allah is most forgiving? Ah, oh, do you see that? We plan the tawbah before we plan the sin. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Do you understand? That also is a trap of the devil. If you've fallen, you seek forgiveness. But may Allah protect us from planning something and telling Allah or telling ourselves, don't worry, Allah is merciful. Because then it's the beginning of a chapter that might end up in a very dangerous way. Here is Adam. What was he told? Shaitan whispers from outside and tells him, hey, there's two things. There's two things. One is you remain young. You don't die. You remain young. Remain young. Subhanallah. How many of us, we love to look young. You know, if you really want a lot of the sisters or even nowadays the brothers to feel good, even if she's looking 60, just tell her, hey sister, you don't look a day older than 25. Oh, wow. Mm. And you know what? You look 70, by the way. It's okay. We're just making you feel happy, man. Mashallah. Allah grant ease. No, but when I tell you guys, hey, handsome guys, I really mean it. Mashallah, by the way. It's not just a feel good thing. But that's what it is. If someone says, you're looking young, man, a lot of people feel good, right? Do you know what? That was a trap shaitan used against the people from the very beginning. He says, I want to show you a tree. If you consume from, two things will happen. One is, you live forever. You'll be young forever. You're not going to go. You won't die. You're not. Death is something that's not going to come to you. Imagine if someone told you, how long do you want to live? Say it out loud. How long do you want to live? Answer the question. Say the figure. What's it? 90? Anyone else? 85? Anyone else? 100? Yeah. The younger you are, the bigger the figure. You must notice that. Anyone else? Forever, Allahu Akbar, may Allah grant us that living forever. Yes, what did you say? A hundred. A million, Allahu Akbar. Okay, you know that's quite a young person. May Allah bless us with an age wherein which he knows that we will be within his obedience. May Allah take us away the day he knows it's better for us to go. Just say Amin. As tough as it is. Because if, I, if, if you were told, listen, you've had your life, right? If you want paradise right now, we're ready to take you here and now. No notice. Are you ready to go? A lot of the people say yes. More and more people say yes, it's okay, we can go. They'll deal with things because we've seen how people deal with things, right? When others have passed on. But it's not easy. We ask Allah to bless us with a good age. We ask Allah to help us to do enough good deeds that His mercy can descend upon us. That's what it is. Because it's ultimately the mercy of Allah that will help us get into Jannah. Our deeds are just by the way. We are trying to please Allah. And that's what it is. That's why we say, if your deeds, say for example, yesterday I mentioned how you might make wudu, you might actually fulfill your salah, your prayer, but there will be shortcomings, don't worry. For as long as it was humanly the best thing you could do, Allah will accept it as is by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be too hard on yourself because then you start thinking, this is not right, I've got to wash it again. This is not this, I've got to do this again. My prayer, I didn't do this, I did that. Don't worry, go easy on yourself. Allah will accept it as it happens. Happened. Go easy, go easy on yourself. But at the same time, when we become too obsessed with looking old and looking young, do you know what? 
Shaytan can come to us and make us do things that, that's wrong in the eyes of Allah. So many people who've decided to change their faces and change their body parts and their organs in order to live up to the world and its standards have regretted it. And when they grow older, they really feel so saddened and depressed. And I'm talking from people who've communicated with me and told me, please warn the world about how serious a decision it is to do these things. So it looks nice and easy because when they advertise it, they don't tell you the negatives of it. Maybe it worked for a few people. If you really need it, it may be permissible. But if you don't and you're just tampering and you just want it to be this way and that way, you know what? Your unique identity that Allah chose you with is the best. So many people, when they've changed something on themselves, they don't like themselves anymore. Why? It's not what Allah gave you and made you. Allah knows that uniqueness, that little sharp tooth well, is you, that's you. When you smile and you can see, Dracula, it's okay. It's you, it's okay. Allah bless you, man. Grant you ease. If there is something wrong, yes. If there is something really bothering you, there may be permissibility. Just get a go ahead. Let the scholars know. Get someone to explain to you to see that you're not doing the wrong thing. You may go ahead. I've had people who come to me and say, you know what? My nose is really bent and I'm really stressed about it. You know what? There is a scope of, there is permissibility to sort it out. If you have six fingers, you are allowed to chop off the one if you need, if need be, because we're bringing it back to normal. That's all we're doing. But we're not playing and tampering with something that is normal. It's okay. It's fine. What are you doing with it? Don't worry. Nearly all of us, when we look in the mirror too much, we find a fault with ourselves. Don't let shaitan come to you and say, you know what? I'm going to show you to do something. You're going to look hot. You're going to look young. Shaitan will actually come up and tell you, you're going to look so attractive. The world's hearts will be broken. I tell you what, you're going to break your relationship with Allah. If that's your intention, then this is what will happen. But if your intention is, the reason why I'm mentioning all this, by the way, the theme is facing reality. So I started in a specific way, but you understand where we're getting. Don't allow shaitan to drop you, to dislike yourself. You must love yourself the way Allah made you. That's when you will be able to worship Allah in a proper way. It's okay. It's okay if a few people don't like the way you look. Because there are a few people who don't like the way they look too. Then what? Allah has created all of us different. We spoke about phones earlier, speak about motor vehicles as well. Not everyone likes the same of anything. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's the world. Make use of it. It's fine. So that was the first thing. Shaitan says, I'm going to show you something. You're going to eat from it. You know what? You will remain young. You, you, you will not die. Never. You're just going to be there. Number, that was a lie. That was a lie. To this day, shaitan uses the same lie with us. I'm going to show you something. You're going to do this. You just got to do one, two, three, four. And you know what? You're going to be, mashallah, you're going to just, you're never going to age. Someone might ask, is this anti-aging permissible? Well, to a degree, there is permissibility of using moisturizers and whatever else. Definitely, there may be. But going out of your way to try and con the world, no, it doesn't do you good. It doesn't do anyone else good. You know what, mashallah? Have you noticed from many, many years, I've been saying I'm a grandfather. Have you noticed that? I've been stressing that I've got so many kids, I've got so much. And why? Just to confirm that, hey, man, you know what? We're aging. We're old, man. You know what? The world is now for all the young ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Every time a young boy comes to me and says, you know what? I watch your programs. I said, inshallah, one day I'll be watching your programs. Why? Empower the child. Let him feel, hey, I need to get up and do something. I can't keep on watching this uncle until he can't do this anymore. I need to take over, man. Subhanallah. And if we don't empower the children, what's going to happen? I, I would really... MashaAllah, what happened? Something? Okay, it's fine. That's because I said I was Android. Maybe. Allahu A'lam. I'll find out later. Guys, I'll fix you guys if you've done something wrong. Okay. So there goes. Allah Almighty grant us goodness. We should empower one another. We have to and we must. The second thing, the second thing that shaitan spoke about, he says, Mulkin la yabla. He says, I'm going to show you, you eat from this 
tree, you will have kingdom that will never deplete. You will have a lot of wealth and money. Ah, oh, come on. If I've got so much of money and I'm going to live forever, what more do I want? Today, reality is even if we have a lot of money, death can come to you right here, right now. So what was the point of all that money? And if you have long age, chances are many times you probably don't have so much of money. Subhanallah. That's why they say, I'm just going to say this, okay? They say, you have a lot of wealth, so now you go and eat at all the posh restaurants, and what happens? You start developing cholesterol and this and that, and all sorts of other things. And what about the young people who didn't really have much? They didn't eat anything that was all oily and meaty and whatever else. They couldn't even afford all of that. And chances are, they have better health than you. Allahu Akbar. Doesn't it happen? Yes, it does. But look at it this way. At least these guys can afford the medication for that cholesterol. May Allah Almighty grant cure to all of us. Say Amin. Whatever your illness and sicknesses are, every single one of us without exception has to go through health issues, small or big. So that's why we say, may Allah grant us good health and cure. Here is shaitan saying, I'm going to teach you. You want to live forever. These two things you're going to need to do them. Uh, sorry, to achieve these two things, you're going to need to eat from this. You are going to need to disobey Allah so that you can live forever and you can have as much money as you want. In other words, no chance, no chance. Adam alayhi salam did it. Guess what? He did it. And did he achieve everlasting life? The answer is no. Did he get kingdom that was not going to be depleted? The answer is no. Who was the liar? Shaitan. What did he do? He conned Adam. What did Adam do? As soon as he ate from the tree and realized, oh no, what did I do? He says exactly what I said. Oh my Lord, forgive us. If you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, we will be the losers. Allah says we forgave him and we let him go. I want to end by saying, my brothers, my sisters, on earth today, we are facing challenges. People will come to us. And we will see adverts, people advertising things. We will see so much around us. I promise you, when Allah has said something to you, his promise is the truth. When Allah has told you what to do and what not to do, that is the way forward. Whatever shaitan has come to make beautiful that is displeasing to Allah, it cannot be beautiful in the long term, not even in the short term. And if ever you have faulted, turn to Allah. I started off by saying one of the most unique gifts that you have and I is the ability to seek forgiveness of Allah and the readiness of that Lord to forgive me and you. May Allah forgive all of us and may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah protect our hearts from being jealous of one another. May Allah help us to become better people as the days pass. And may Allah Almighty gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah Almighty grant us the best of this world and the next. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mufti Menk is about to come back up shortly with the other mashayikh. Uh, before that, uh, who's head of the Sunnah guy? Sunnah guy online, social media, I see a few hands. Okay, so uh, I'd like to invite up the Sunnah guy, inshallah, who's going to be talking a bit about a project that he's closely working on. You know, Sunnah guy? You wake up safe in your house, you're healthy and you have food for the day. It's as if you're given the entire world and everything in it. This is a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu but it's the one hadith that puts life into perspective. Where we worry about bills, rent, expenses or our future. Not knowing that it's a blessing to even just wake up secure. It's a blessing to wake up healthy and with food because what else really matters? You need a place to stay, you need your health, you need food for the day. Like Wallahi, you've made it. <laughs> you've made it. <laughs> you're good. And that perspective will solve most of your mental stress if you're able to truly understand how blessed you are. Wallahi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, for the final time, I just want to say thank you for being so patient here today. And I just want to mention one thing to you guys. And that is that, you know, depression and sadness is different for everyone. Everyone goes through their own form of depression. 
And I remember a time when things were difficult for me in my life, when I went through hardship and pain and turmoil, where I couldn't see my future, I would wake up every single day thinking, is this the reality that I have to live in? And so many of us are hurting because there is so much confusion in the world around us today. And how to navigate around all of this is becoming harder and harder and harder and more and more confusing. And so I'd like to invite back onto stage a person who has dealt with these issues for many, many years and has a lot of experience to ask him a few short, interesting questions to see how we can deal with this. So please, if I could ask the Dean of Iman Academy to come back on, Mufti Mank, please. Mufti, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, mashallah. Mufti, jazakallah khair for coming for one final time. It's been an amazing journey here with uh, Light Upon Light. But I want to ask you a couple of questions, please, if that's okay. Bismillah. You know, we have a lot of youngsters that go through heartbreak. They go through problems and pain and they feel, they feel their chest constricted and they really don't know how to navigate through this. I want to ask you a question that I truly feel a lot of people would like to know. Mufti, quickly, these three fire questions. The first one is, how can we get over heartbreak? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Don't you agree the creator of the heart is Allah? If Allah has created the heart, the best way to avoid a heartbreak is to connect that heart with its maker, with Allah. Allah built it in the first place. He made it. He brought it to being. He won't break it. And if it has been broken because you've given it to another human being, and this is what happens. When you give your heart to someone else, they then have the ability to mess with it, tamper with it, you know, let it beat heart faster or slower in the sense that your emotions, and so then they break your heart. And one day you say, I'm heartbroken. Why? Because you gave your heart to someone besides Allah. So if that does happen, the solution is to connect it back with Allah. Your dhikr, your remembrance, your salah, your prayer, your recitation of the Quran. And you know what? You might want to speak to a few people who will be able to guide you through the light of the same Quran and the teachings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Jazakallah khair mufti. Leading on from heartbreak, you know, I speak to a lot of young people. I find that there is this one problem that we have and I feel it's probably the channel that leads to heartbreak mufti. And the question I want to ask you is, is it really possible for guys and girls to be just friends? Subhanallah. Everywhere we've been, our brothers ask me the same question, right? And everywhere we've been, there's laughter from the crowd when the question is asked, why? Why is there laughter? Can they be just friends? Ah, oh, there. I didn't hear a single one say yes, but there might have been a few in the crowd. I tell you why. What we believe, yes, you've understood it, you know it, and a lot of the times, intentions are different. You know, when you, you say, we're just going to be friends, the boy's intentions are slightly different from the girl's intent. Do you agree? I fully agree. Fully. You see, he's a boy as well, right? <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, it's, it's facts. And secondly is, when we say, oh, so does that mean I'm not even allowed to communicate with the opposite sex? No, not at all. You are allowed, you will, you will have to, you must, you should be polite, you should be respectful, but you need to know your line. You know, when I, you will interact with so many people of the opposite sex, both ways. But it should not just be an unlimited relation. Wherever you see that, you know what, there's something going in the wrong direction, quickly step back, reflect over it, see, think what's going on. The quicker you actually hold back, the less of a heartache it will be. May Allah Almighty protect us all. So it's rules and regulations are not there to make your life tough. But look at the reality on the ground. Rules and regulations, like I said in my talk, are there because long term, Allah knows what you need as a human being to succeed on earth. Wallahu a'lam. Jazakallah khair mufti. Now, for one final question. Um, the topic of marriage is very, very interesting. And I was there, out there in the stalls, and I was meeting and speaking to loads of people. You know, they were saying, ah, oh, bro, I can't get married, I can't get married. You know, what do you say about marriage? And I keep asking them. Every time, everyone I ask, all the brothers, Can, are you married yet? You're 24, 25? Head down, no, no, no. So, you have a marriage course on Iman Academy. And Iman Academy is our online learning platform. Number one, Mufti, is it okay to learn online? And number two, how can something like Iman Academy, and especially your marriage course, help young people in understanding what to look for and how to be once they're married? 
Very quickly, one of the reasons why a lot of the people are not married, we've set the bar so high, we're looking for people who don't exist. Inshallah, when you go to Jannah, you can try and look there. But I promise you, sometimes we don't realize they're human beings. There's not going to be someone who can, you know, spoil you to the degree you want to be. And both ways. You know, sometimes some of the guys, I say, okay, so what's your criteria, brother? The man, I say, you know, even in the books that have explained what you get in Jannah, I, I, you know what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his butt. Regarding learning online, yes, indeed, it is permissible, not only permissible, it is an obligation for us to learn. And if the only way we can learn is online, then it should be. Do not let someone fool you to say you cannot learn online. For as long as you know the source and you know that it's coming to you from an authentic source, you must learn. Because we have these devices, Allah is going to ask us, how did you use them? You can't just say WhatsApp and Snapchat all day. You got to say, I read the Quran on the same device. You got to say, I learned your, the message that you delivered to us on the same device, whether it's online or not. And then the issue of Iman Academy, mashallah, it's so simplified because your time, your pace, it's very easy. It's light learning. You get to learn bit by bit. It's not very costly and so on. So, inshallah, we have no excuse. May Allah make it easy. Amin, Ya Rab. Mufti, Jazakallah. May Allah SWT bless you and thank you for all your time. Barakallah feek. Should I sit here or? No, if you come, we'll invite you back on inshallah. Okay, Barakallah feek. So brothers and sisters, before I continue, can I just ask all of you to turn your Wi-Fi on and logging onto the Excel Wi-Fi, please? You'll find out in a second. As you guys have just heard there from Mufti Menk, you know, when it comes to these devices, when it comes to learning online, when it comes to all these sort of things on how to navigate yourself through this world, we sometimes hesitate because we think that we have to always learn the traditional way and sometimes that is the best way, but we, all, we almost find ourselves just thinking about all the obstacles of learning. Oh, you know, I don't want to learn in the evenings. You know, the Champions League is on. I want to watch Madrid and PSG play. I, uh, what do I do? How do I navigate around that? You might be, for example, looking after family and you might want to learn that way. So a lot of us are struggling in that sense. Now, before I speak about Iman Academy, I just want to let you guys know one thing. All these questions that we have, marriage, our life, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about our religion. They sit in our minds. And these events are amazing to give us an Iman booster. To lift you up, to give you that perk that you need. It's like a gas station where you go in and you fuel up and you feel empowered. And you know, I remember going to these, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And I used to remember, so I feel so great afterwards. But then what is there after that to continue? What is there after that to keep you going? To keep you on that momentum run after you go to these events? And the, well, wallahi, the one thing that I used to realize and wake up to the reality when I used to go through my own depression and hardship and my heart felt like it was going through turmoil was that I neglected one thing and that was understanding who Allah is, understanding His religion and understanding what are my obligations. When I learned who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, the fact that He is with you wherever you are, the fact that He sees you wherever you are, knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, learning about the seerah, learning about my religion, by Allah it changed my life forever. And so that's why I want to present to you Iman Academy, an online learning platform that has over 300 hours of recorded lectures for you to learn at your own convenience, in your own time, when you want, on demand, by people who you have seen here today. And I want to ask you guys a simple question. A learning online platform like that, with Mufti's marriage course as well, and with all these other different subjects in Islam, fiqh, aqidah, seerah, tafsir, hadith, Quran, tajweed. How much do you think something like that would cost on a monthly basis? Just want some quick hands. Or just shout it out. 30 pounds. Anyone else? 50 pounds. Anyone else? 20 pounds. Anyone else? Okay, 50 pounds. Cool. So, you see, this here, <laughs> subhanAllah, honestly, Everyone has said 50, 30, 40, etc. This here, Iman Academy, is here for £4.99. £4.99 per month. And what I want every single one of you to do before we leave, because this is the last event where this offer will be present. So you want to take advantage of it now, is to get out your phones and to scan this QR code above. Scan that QR code above and I'll tell you why. Many times you will ask yourself in life, 
Where are my opportunities? Where is my chance to change my life? Where is my chance to shift that direction, to make that pivot in my life? Where is my opportunity? Wallahi, sometimes the opportunities are sitting right in front of you. They are in front of you, staring you in the face, like what you see behind me. And so that's why I urge and implore every single one of you to take advantage of this now. After this Light Upon Light tour, that offer will no longer be available. And I said to the brothers, I said to them, guys, listen, we need to give them an incentive. Let's say we believe in this product so much, give them 14 days and if they wish to cancel, they can cancel. So scan it, sign up within 14 days. If you do not wish to carry on, you can get a full refund. That's how much we believe in this product. And now it's up to you to take advantage of it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Okay, brothers and sisters, we're going to have the sofa chat very, very shortly, inshallah. We're just removing the lectern. And then also to say, look, um, Mufti Meng's books are going to be available outside in the boulevard after this session if anybody wants to purchase them, inshallah. Also, not to forget the 27th night of Ramadan, inshallah, which may well be Laylatul Qadr. Uh, the tickets are available. The same website that you purchase the tickets for this event from. If I can invite up our dear Mashaykh now, inshallah, Sheikh Wahaj, Omar Suleiman, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, and of course Mufti Menk. <laughs> Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dema Shaykh, I want to jump straight into the Q&A because I think it's always beneficial. We can get as much out uh, in terms of questions uh, as soon as possible. So I'd like to start uh, with Shaykh Wahaj, if, if I may please. Have you ever made a dua that wasn't accepted that you really wanted to happen and only later you realized it was better for you that it, wasn't, it didn't happen the way you wanted? Yes. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I can tell you what mine was. No, no. If Allah didn't accept it, He obviously doesn't want me to say it to you as well. So. <laughs> Sheikh, did anything ever happen to you that you didn't expect that was good for you? That you can maybe tell us about? Um, everything, walillahi alhamd. Um, if there are, there's a lot of things that um, I can share in which you see, in which you see um, the intervention of the Creator, which saves you from from a whole heap of calamities. Um, I will mention one that I can share with you, which is ahlan ahlan shaykhan. Um, so my father was walking down the street uh, in the city and he passed a shop that he knew, like he knew the shopkeeper. And he goes, I tarried, I delayed just by saying, John, how are you? Just a second or so. Walked down, there were two cars. You know how there's a little gap between? And I walked through the gap and as my foot reached there, a truck passed by. So that if I hadn't held back for a second talking to the gentleman, um, the truck would have made contact. So you notice that a little delay, unexpected, held you back from a problem like that. And there are endless situations that um, everyone has experienced. Um, and alhamdulillah ta'ala that we are Muslims and believe um, in the intervention of Allah Rabbul Aziz in our lives. No. Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah Sheikh. What's amazing is that how many of these incidents probably happen and we don't even realize that this was a blessing that he realized, but it happens all the time to us. We probably don't even uh, see it, let alone thank Allah for it. Sheikh Omar, for yourself, um, a lot of people talk about leaving a legacy and it seems to be this thing now, oh, you've got to leave a legacy. 
How important is it to leave a legacy? I'm doing this again, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, a sister just took shahada backstage, Sister Lucy. Which is why I walked on late uh, again. So, please make dua for Sister Lucy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her firmness and thabat and steadfastness on this way and guide her all the way to Jannah. Allahumma ameen. ameen. And I'm going to say what I said last night. If there's anyone else in the crowd uh, that's visiting here and that's having that moment where they're considering faith and you feel like Allah has opened your heart to this, uh, we're open for business backstage. Make yourself known to one of the organizers and inshallah ta'ala will we'll meet you uh, backstage. And I also wanted to say on that note, in terms of a legacy, you know, subhanallah, how often do you see someone who passes away and suddenly they're celebrated online and you say, what an extraordinary person, but it was a very ordinary person or they were treated like very ordinary people while they were alive. You know, there's one manifestation of this. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person could be ash'ath, aghbar, dusty, disheveled, turned away from people's doors, لو أقسم على الله لأبرة. But if they took an oath upon Allah, Allah would honor that oath. And he pointed specifically to Al-Bara ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the brother of Anas radiallahu anhu. And I spoke about Al-Bara radiallahu anhu a few nights ago, an incredible human being, subhanAllah. But he would not be, he'd be looked at funny in a gathering. Who are you? Whereas his brother Anas anhu would give the, uh, the long lectures of the Shama'il of the Prophet وسلم, and the Ahadith. Legacy is not about fame, and we conflate the two. And we wait for someone to rise to the ranks of either being recognized as extraordinary in life or death to suddenly celebrate. And the reality is, is that there are a lot of extraordinary people around you that you may be treating as ordinary, including yourself. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Allah has hidden two within two. He's hidden his awliya, he's hidden his close friends amongst his servants, so you don't know which one of them is a servant of Allah. Uh, I'm sorry, a wali of Allah, a friend of Allah. And he has hidden his pleasure within his good deeds, so you don't know which good deed is going to give you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the person who is indeed a wali of Allah, may Allah make us from his awliya, specific friends of God, they strive and strive and strive. They always feel deficient. Now, the last thing I'll say with this in terms of legacy, and I've said this before, legacy is not how you're remembered, legacy is how you're resurrected. If you can remember this, legacy is not how you're remembered. Legacy is how you are resurrected. When the Prophet ﷺ was going through the night of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, out of all people he smelled, he smelled this beautiful perfume and he said to Jibreel ﷺ, what is that smell? And he said, that is the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. Sounds very random, right? The, hair, the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. This is a night where the Prophet ﷺ is meeting Ibrahim السلام, and Isa السلام, and Musa السلام, and Yusuf السلام, and he smells who? The hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. What's her story? She was combing the hair of the, hair, of, of, of the daughter of Fir'aun. She dropped the comb. She, and uh, when she dropped the comb, she said, Bismillah. And the daughter of Fir'aun said, you mean my father? She said, no, you're uh, Allah. Your father's Lord, my Lord, your Lord, the Lord of the worlds, Allah. And Fir'aun murdered her. I'm paraphrasing this in a nasty way. And, you know, imagine when she was put out there to be thrown into a ditch of fire with her children. At that time, who's going to remember this woman? Who's going to remember this woman? To be mentioned in the highest heavens in a conversation between the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel ﷺ because her scent was overwhelming. Even in that occasion is a sign that there are going to be many people like that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count us all amongst them who were not known in this world but are celebrities in the heavens. And subhanAllah, you know, I talk a lot about my mother. May Allah have mercy on her. My mother was, was the absolute inspiration for everything that I do. Behind everything that I do that is of khair. And most people would not know her. She's, people come up to me now and say, listen to that lecture about your mother, listen to that lecture about your mother. But if I didn't do that lecture and talk about her, you might have assumed she was just another person. But the reality is, is that she was the most influential person in my life. And if I can ask, Brother Khuram, are you here?
Can you come to the stage if you're here? Brother Khuram, the father of Sister Amani. You here, Brother Khuram? Can you identify yourself? Can you just walk to the front? Where are you, Brother Khuram? I didn't tell him I was going to do this. So. And I apologize, Mashaykh. I feel like I walked into like a meme and I'm like, the, I, I don't belong between you two, mashallah. <laughs> like that guy that got photoshopped in the middle. Like, too much noor here. Anwar. Allah bless you both. <laughs> I want to talk a bit, inshallah. Um, how many of you have heard of Sister Amani Liaqat? What is the name of the channel? Uh, Fight for Amani. Fight for Amani. Yeah. Uh, Brother Khuram is here with his wife, Sister Yasmin, and his daughter, uh, Ruqayya, and Maliha is not here. And Amani, may Allah have mercy on her, uh, passed away within a year, um, was an incredible human being, an incredible, incredible young woman. And inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna honor her tonight with the ta'ala. Um, Amani left a huge legacy. Can you imagine, subhanAllah, as she was passing away and she's inspiring the world through her brain cancer, she still chose to do a podcast after, after all treatment had been withdrawn and she knew that she was going to die. And if that's not someone who wants to touch the world and guide people and leave a legacy, then I don't know what is. She could have easily rolled over and been hopeless and her family could have done the same. But they used those moments, subhanAllah, to inspire us and her family continues to inspire. So can we give a, a massive takbir for them? And a round of applause for them as well. Clapping is fine for them as well, inshallah. Thank you so much. May Allah have mercy on her and may Allah make it easy for your family. And you can say anything that you want to about Amani right now, inshallah. Jazakallah. I mean, Amani was, uh, you know, our firstborn and a complete inspiration to us all. And um, life was good. Life was good. She was born healthy. And on her 22nd birthday, she just collapsed with a massive seizure. Uh, it was the beginning of lockdown. So we weren't allowed in hospital with her. Received a phone call. Can you imagine from your doctor? One minute you're preparing. She's in her adulthood. She's about to get married. And the next day you get a phone call saying, sorry, your daughter's got 12 to 18 months to live. I mean, we're completely devastated. Completely devastated. And Amani being the person she was, turned something bad into something good. Started a podcast, reached out to the community and wanted to make a difference. And I still don't know how Somehow, through her creating awareness, I received a private Twitter uh, message from dear uh, Umar Suleiman saying, I've heard about your daughter's story uh, from the US. What can I do to help you all? And I, I'm, I just want to point out that it was a private message. And the dear Imam, you know, spent time and counseled my daughter over the phone privately. And my daughter said, I want to share the information you're telling to make a difference for all the other young people who are suffering from cancer as a dawa, and to help and say, look, there's whatever darkness there is, there's light there. And that's how the podcast began. And dear Imam, you know, spent a long time with my daughter so this podcast could be created. And it's, you can follow her on a Fight for Amani YouTube channel. The video is there. It will be beneficial for all the young children here. Create a legacy, that's what this is all about. And the true test for me for whether, you know, somebody is sincere or not, is not when they do things publicly, it's when they do privately. And I can say this, and I know the dear Imam, he didn't ask any of this to be made public. He approached my family privately, and mashallah, he, you know, he's given his time to us, and may Allah reward him. And, and I'm hoping, inshallah, that through the work that the, my daughter did with the Imam, that inshallah this will be a sadhaka for in the hereafter. And we receive thousands of messages on our Instagram channel about how Amani has changed other people's lives, Muslims and non-Muslims, how they've looked at her story and they have been inspired a bit and they're saying, well, our problems are nothing like Amani's. But still, despite this, you've drawn closer to Allah and we are now going to, as a result of you, draw closer to Allah. So really, that's the message is that wherever there's darkness, there's still light because we're Muslims. 
Thank you very much, Imam. Barakallahu May Allah have mercy on her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept her as a shaheeda, as a martyr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you and your family beautiful patience and a beautiful reward and join you with your beautiful daughter in the most beautiful of places Thank once you, again. All of Thank us. you so Zakam much. Khair. Thank Ameen. you everyone. Jazakallah. Thank you so much. Imam. And I apologize to Mufti Mink and Sheikh Wahaj for the detour. Barakallah. Jazakallah, Herr Sheikh. Um, Mufti, uh, if I may ask you a question actually that uh, balances that question quite well. Um, can we be good Muslims when we have full-time jobs or our housewives and our days taken up with our children and family or and our prayers are often rushed, maybe with a child hanging off us? It's hard to feel that you're a good Muslim and you just want to get through the day at times. Bismillah rahman rahim Amazing, I was just thinking about how, when we say leaving a legacy, each one of us, Allah has made easy for us something in our lives. Allah has helped us steer our lives in a certain way. But the obligations, they are not so many. You look at the five daily prayers, they take up very little of your time. You look at some of these obligations, the obligation of Hajj is once in a lifetime. The obligation of Zakah, it's something calculated and so on. So, the obligations we cannot compromise. But beyond that, each one of us has our own field, our own specialization, our own occupation, things that we need to get done for the world. If we do all of that with the correct intention, trying our best to use the field we've specialized in to serve for the sake of Allah, we will automatically be, uh, you know, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would be able to uh, be doing whatever uh, we are doing within what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it doesn't mean I'm not a good Muslim just because I'm busy as a doctor all day. What are you doing all day? That makes you a good Muslim, by the way, because... It's not just that you have to sit and read Quran all day, every day. Some people might be reading more because maybe they teach Quran or maybe they have more time. You know, as you grow older, you might have more time or maybe when you're a bit younger. But there comes a time in your life, you busy with something, make sure you carry yourself in a way that you've been of maximum benefit to everyone around you. That itself is being a good Muslim or a Muslimah. So if you're doing the chores at home, or you're, for example, busy driving your children or, you know, to school or whatever else it may be, that itself is being a good Muslim. Wallahu alam. Jazakumullah Sheikh. Sheikh Wahaj, um, we live in a time where we are very connected with each other, at least in some ways, but you speak to people and they feel more lonely than ever. What advice do you give to someone who feels lonely in this world? <clears throat> Bismillah wa salatu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Um, uh, Mufti, with your permission, can I just say one word about your question? Allah two bless you. Two, two, two words, words, inshallah. Allah, Allah bless you. <laughs> Learn generosity. You know, not one word, two words. Allah bless you, Ya Rab. Um, if you practice the deen, the deen will help you with your work. You understand that? Like, if you practice the deen effectively, the deen will help you through your day, through your work, through life. Um, you see a lot of people that get a lot done uh, through their days. Say we start the day with meditation. Uh, the deen forces you to start the day with salah and with recitation and with meditation. Um, there are things that make you lazy during the day, for example, eating a lot. The deen tells you to eat a little bit so, and you'll be more productive that way. Um, the deen teaches you gratitude. Gratitude is the most productive of emotions. So if you practice the deen properly, it gives you, uh, you know, a better chance of succeeding in, in life and in work as opposed to people without religion trying to do the same. Uh, as with regards to feeling connected and um, you know, linking up with people and uh, feeling part of something. Uh, my advice um, to everyone, and although you can connect uh, on, in a digital world, um, it pays to step out of your, your house and your room and uh, 
uh, go and actually make connections. Um, you know, the mosque is a beautiful place. Um, uh, if you work with good people, beautiful place. Family is a beautiful place. Make a conscious effort to connect with people. And I must, um, Sheikh and I do pray you forgive me for this. Um, so I have, I have had the pleasure of uh, being uh, with Sheikh Omar for the last few days. And um, just the story that uh, I have heard just now, um, mashallah, across continents, across the sea, um, he is making a deliberate effort to connect with people. In every city we have been to, he has gone and visited the local shuyukh and uh, made connections, and that's an effort he has to make. I myself, I stay in my hotel room and wait for the next event because I can't be bothered. Um, <laughs> I'm being serious. But um, this is the, like, and I have learned a fair bit. I normally learn more than you guys do in these events. And I learn from, um, from the mashayikh that I am with. Uh, I learn a, uh, endlessly from, from Mufti Mink. And wallahi la aqulaha daqdaqatan, just because we're sitting here. Um, I, I learn from uh, nuances that he does things. Um, I have just had the pleasure of meeting uh, uh, my dear brother, Dr. Omar Suleiman. And this part I am taking from him. Moving forward, I will make a conscious effort, a little bit at a time, to... Uh, to connect more, inshallah ta'ala. Zadakumullahu tashrifun wa takreem. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. Um, Sheikh Omar Mufti, I'm getting lots of signs that we're finishing, but I really want to ask you both a question each, if that's okay, and we'll two, try and keep two the answers. Two questions, inshallah, no problem. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. The, uh, the guys can take it out with Mufti, it's not me now, alhamdulillah. Okay, so, Sheikh Omar, um, we hear so much about grief that people go through and different forms of grief um, and something that may afflict us may seem, you know, inconsequential compared to what we hear about. And so that you feel, is it right for me to feel sad or should I even feel depressed about this, if you understand the question? Because you start to feel guilty for doing some people say, oh look, people are so much more worse around the world don't worry about it. And then in some ways you can't deal or process with your own grief or even being told that this is nothing for you to feel grief about. How do we balance this? Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Mufti Mink, Sheikh Wahaj for those very kind words. Very undeserving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you both and honor you both and raise you and elevate you in the hereafter and make you amongst those that are crowned in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Allahumma ameen. Um, the question that you're asking is a really interesting one because when the companions came to the Prophet Sallallahu they felt guilty about a particular type of thought that went through their minds. And they were the waswas of shaitan, the whispers of shaitan, right? And they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, we feel these things sometimes, or we hear these things rather, um, and we think these thoughts that for us to be thrown off of a cliff is better than actually verbalizing them. And the Prophet ﷺ says, oh, Did you really find that inside of you? And they said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, iman. That is clear faith. That's incredible faith. Not the fact that you have whispers, the fact that you felt guilty about having them and still moved towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite some of those whispers. And so, what did the Prophet ﷺ say when he held his son Ibrahim? And this is a, subhanAllah, to me it's, it's, it's actually one of the most moving scenes of the entire seerah is when he lost Ibrahim, his son. Just because the stage of his life that Ibrahim was born, um, the expectations, the happiness, the joy, like he had the whole of Medina to celebrate with, the, the whole community is celebrating the birth of the son of the Prophet Sallallahu he named him after his father Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was so happy. And the description of the Prophet ﷺ with Ibrahim was that when he, held his, when he held him, his tears were falling on. I mean, the Prophet's tears were falling on his boy. Like, think about that. It's a very intense sight. And they said, Wa anta ya Rasulullah, you too, O Messenger of Allah. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, wa anta ya Rasulullah. And he said the famous words. 
إن القلب لا يحزن وإن العين لا تدمع that the heart feels grief the eyes shed tears and we are sad over your departure O Ibrahim we are sad but we don't say except that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in summary subhanallah there's something very powerful uh, Shaykh al-Islam 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 mentions um, uh, a comparison between the Prophet sallallahu when Ibrahim died and Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah when his son died Fudayl ibn Iyad had a son that passed away praying behind him. He was so moved, overtaken by the emotion of the recitation that he passed out. He used to, particularly verses about heaven and hell, and they were very intense for him, and especially, you know, punishment. And Fulay did not know that his son was praying behind him. He used to check to see if he was there. And one day when he was praying behind him, he, or he didn't know he was praying behind him, he started the salah, and he read those verses, and he heard the collapse and his son had collapsed, and his son actually did not recover. They called him Qatil al-Qur'an, the one who was killed by the recitation. And Fulayl loved the son. It was his most righteous son. And Fulayl came to the janazah, and he had a big smile on his face. Big smile. And he wanted to show sabr, patience. And Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, it's a profound example, not to drag this. He said, subhanAllah, he said, who had surface level. Remember we were just talking about this today. At the surface, who had the better response? Rasulullah Sallallahu cried. Fulayl was smiling. And look at how he reconciled. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu was able to combine perfectly the emotion of rahmah and rida, being merciful, the mercy that Allah put in his heart towards the child, as well as pleasure with the decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Most people can't do both of those things at the same time. And so they have to disproportionately preference one emotion over the other. So he said, Fulayl chose Rida because he knew that if he let that door open, he might not have been able to contain himself. So the Prophet Sallallahu response was more perfect. Meaning grief is not a bad thing. Mercy is a good thing. Allah put these things in your heart. But when you channel all of that to Rida, to pleasure, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I'm still going to continue, I'm still going to act, I'm still going to pray, I'm still going to go to the masjid, I'm still going to give charity, I'm not going to submit myself to bad feelings. Like a sarih al-iman, that is clear faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people of iman. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. Jazakum uh, Very quickly before we go to our final question, Sister Maryam Ahmed. Sister Maryam Ahmed, if you are here, please can you go uh, to the help desk outside, registration desk, uh, ASAP. It's uh, quite important, it's quite urgent. Sister Maryam Ahmed, if you can make your way to the registration desk uh, as quickly as possible. Jazakum if there are any sisters at the back, if they know where she is, if you can help her. Jazakum um, al-Har. Mufti, for yourself, and I, I've been forced to say, I'm getting, please, please, make this the last question, but let's see, Sheikh. Uh, Mufti, today scholars are expected to be everything for everyone. Is this fair, or is this actually the case? Is it even possible? I think today the scholars, a lot of them are still, the young ones, like myself and all of us who are seated here, we're still developing, and many of us have specialized in certain aspects of the deen. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, being the Nabi of Allah, he obviously, every single department, he was the go-to. With us, you find one may be specialized in something, another one in another thing, a third one in a third thing, a fourth one in a fourth thing. So you would have to respect all of them and take whatever they are specialized in within the specialization. You have some who are brilliant at comparative religions. You have others who are brilliant at tafsir. Some are amazing at hadith. Some might be able to provide in depth with the fiqh. Some, you know, might do so many other things. So it's according to what I see on earth today, there are very few who would probably have more than one or two specializations. Most of them are specialized in just one thing. And therefore we respect all of them and we take whatever 
they are specialized, it doesn't make them bad. So you find a lot of the times online you have comments saying this guy doesn't know what he's talking about and they compare one scholar with another. That's not fair. This man's department is so different but he's still serving the same Allah. He's still serving the same deen. The other man's department or female, for example, you have females who are scholars, their department is something different and they're serving in a unique way. If you were to take some of these away, you may create a void actually which may result in a certain type of a loss within a certain category of people. So, inshallah, we respect them all, but at the same time, each one is still in a developing phase perhaps, or have specialized in certain things and not in others. If you ask me a question, for example, on a topic I know my brother Imam Omar has specialized in, I would immediately say, I think let him respond to this and leave it. And that's how it should be, wallahu a'la. But Mufti, beyond the Islamic sciences, and I guess to add this, I guess sometimes we expect from our scholars that they should be scholars, they should be leaders, they should be politicians, they should be representing the community at every level. Is this fair to have this burden upon our scholars? I think, again, some have chosen to be more connected to, you know, uh, politics, some have decided to stay away from it, some have decided perhaps uh, that they're more effective on you know, social media, some are more effective in the masjid as an imam and a da'i and so on. It's not fair for us to expect everything from every single scholar, but rather you will have a certain things you will benefit from this man and other things you will benefit from the imam in the masjid and no one else. Wallahu a'lam. Jazakum al and I guess this is a lesson for all of us that actually we try and take as much benefit as we can from whoever is giving it, whether they're specialists in it or not, I guess is how we approach it. Um, on that note, I've got a couple of uh, announcements before I say thank you to everyone. Um, the, books, the books are still available outside, inshallah, after we finish. There's lots of cakes still available, brothers and sisters. We really don't want to be wasteful people. As Muslims, it doesn't befit us that we waste food. So do go over, inshallah, and purchase whatever's left of the food that's out there. Uh, I'd also like to say Jazakum uh, to all of yourselves for making the effort to come. We haven't thanked Allah, we haven't thanked the people, so thank you to yourselves. Thank you to all of the staff who've been working tirelessly, the security guards, the AV, the camera people, everyone. And last but not least, really to our Mashaykh, Allah Azzawajal, really bless them. I, I can't say enough really how they've been working really hard over the last week. It honestly makes me a little bit um, teary because, subhanAllah, they've sacrificed the things that we take for granted, our family, our time, for no other reason than seeking Allah's pleasure and to benefit us. And often, they will put themselves in the firing line for this. Undeservedly so. So really, we make dua that Allah Azza wa Jal protect our mashaykh, Allah Azza wa Jal protect them, take them home safely to their families. May Allah Azza wa Jal remove anything in anyone's hearts towards them and fill it with iman. May Allah Azza wa Jal gather us all in a better gathering than this in the hereafter. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept any good that anyone has done today and especially the words of our scholars and allow us to live by them and seek Allah Azza wa Jal's face in the hereafter. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.